Ground Control provides a full flight control system for your PX4 powered vehicles. It is an easy to use interface built for beginners, but still provides high end features for experienced users. QGC offers multiple features such as full setup configuration, mission planning for autonomous flight, flight maps with telemetry data, video streaming overlay, support for multiple vehicles, and it runs on all major platforms. Let's run through each section of the app and I'll explain what does what and how to use it. Then we'll go over setting up a couple of missions using the simulator. This should give you enough of an idea on how to use everything on your own. Within the settings view, you will see some tabs on the left side of the window. The tabs are general, com links, offline maps, mavlink, and console. General is the main place for application level configuration. You can set values for settings like display units, miscellaneous settings, data persistence, telemetry logs, the fly view, plan view, and many more. Comlinks allows you to manually create communication links and connect to them. Keep in mind that normally this is not needed since QGC will automatically connect to the most common devices. Offline Maps allows you to cache map tiles for use when not connected to the internet. You can create multiple offline sets, each for a different location. The Mavlink settings allow you to configure options and view information specific to Mavlink communications. This includes setting the Mavlink system ID for QGC and viewing link quality. The screen also allows you to manage Mavlink 2 log streaming, including automating log upload to flight review. The console can be a helpful tool for diagnosing QGC problems. You can click the Set Logging button to enable or disable logging information displayed by QGC. Within the Vehicle Setup tab, you'll find available setup options for the flight controller. All tabs marked in red will require setup before flight. When you first go into the Vehicle Setup, you'll be presented with a Summary tab, which is the general overview of important setup options for your vehicle. The Firmware tab allows you to upgrade or even downgrade the firmware version on your flight controller. When you come upon this view, you'll need to disconnect and reconnect your flight controller. At the point QGC will detect your flight controller and a firmware setup dialog will be presented. By default, the latest version of PX4 or ArduPilot are installed. If you checked Advanced, then you can choose a different version. Once you've made your selection, then just click the OK button. Airframe setup is used to select the airframe that matches your vehicle. This will in turn set up the various tuning values for flight parameters. Select the broad vehicle group type that matches your airframe and then use the drop down within the group to choose the airframe that best matches your vehicle. If you haven't set up an airframe, then the sensor setup will be disabled. The sensor setup section allows you to configure and calibrate the vehicle's compass, gyroscope, accelerometer, and any other sensors. The available sensors will depend on the autopilot firmware and vehicle type. Click on the button for each sensor to start its calibration sequence. Radio setup is used to configure the mapping of your main transmitter attitude control sticks, roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle, to channels and to calibrate the minimum, maximum, trim, and reverse settings for all other channels. The calibration process is straightforward. You will be asked to move the sticks in a specific pattern that is shown on the transmitter diagram on the top right of the screen. Simply follow the instructions to complete the calibration. The Flight Modes section allows you to map flight modes to radio channels and hence to the switches on your RC transmitter. 
you must already have configured your radio in order to set flight modes. Flight modes provide different levels of autopilot assisted flight and fully autonomous flight via mission or offboard control. Different flight modes allow new users to learn flying with a more forgiving platform than provided by basic RC control alone. They also enable automation for common tasks like taking off, landing, and returning to the original launch position. The power setup screen is used to configure battery parameters and also provide advanced settings for propellers. You are able to calibrate the ESCs through the power tab as well. Motor setup is used to test individual motors or servos. Ensure the propellers are off before testing the motors. The safety setup page allows you to configure the most important failsafe settings. Other failsafe settings can be set via the parameters described in the failsafe documentation for each vehicle type. The tuning page allows you to configure settings on your vehicle which control basic flight characteristics. Camera setup is used to adjust camera and gimbal settings. The parameters screen allows you to find and modify any of the parameters associated with the vehicle. The parameters are organized in groups found on the left side of the view. You can also search for a parameter by entering a term in the search field. To change the value of a parameter, click on the parameter row in a group or search list. This will open a side dialog in which you can update the value. If there are no selections made, then you'll be able to see the tools options, which you will see more options like refresh, reset all to defaults, load from file and save to file, clear RC to param, and reboot vehicle. The plan view is used to plan autonomous missions for your vehicle and upload them to the vehicle. Once the mission is planned and sent to the vehicle, you switch to the fly view to fly the mission. It is also used to configure the geofence and rally points if those are supported by the firmware. At a high level, the steps to create a mission are set home position, add waypoints, set a landing point, upload the mission to the vehicle, change to the fly view, and start the mission. There are five main elements to the plan view. Map, plan toolbar, Plan Tools, Mission Command List, and Terran Altitude. The planned home in the plan view is used to set the approximate starting point for the mission. It will allow QGC to estimate mission times and enable waypoints. Plan Tools are used for adding waypoints, creating complicated geometries, saving missions, and navigating the map. Mission commands are listed to the right side of the view. At the top, you will see options for the mission. Geofence and rally points. With the mission option, you will find the mission start panel. This is used to set a number of default settings that affect the start and end of the mission. The fly view is used to command and monitor the vehicle when flying. Within the flight view, you can run an automated pre-flight checklist, control a mission, guide the vehicle manually, switch between a map view and video view, and display video, mission, telemetry data, and other information for the current vehicle or switch between connected vehicles. The fly view has six elements, the map, fly toolbar, fly tools, instrument panel, video switcher, and the confirmation slider. The map will display the current position of all connected vehicles. The fly toolbar displays key information such as GPS, battery, RC control, and vehicle state. Fly tools allow you to operate the vehicle by changing flight modes. 
The instrument panel displays vehicle information including telemetry, camera, video, system health, and vibration. Video switcher will switch between the map and video window. And finally, the confirmation slider allows you to confirm requested actions. There are a number of other elements that are not displayed by default or are only displayed in certain conditions. For example, the multi-vehicle selector is only displayed if you have multiple vehicles, and the pre-flight checklist tool button is only displayed if the appropriate setting is enabled. To create a mission, click on Plan View. You do not need to have a connected vehicle at this point, only to upload the plan to the vehicle. You will notice that there is only a red directional arrow, and on the right will be Mission Start. Again, a basic mission needs to have a takeoff point, one waypoint, and a landing point. On the left side, if you click Center, you will be presented with a list of options. Because we are using the simulator, let's center on the vehicle. Now that we are centered on the vehicle's current position, we can then set the takeoff command. Simply click Takeoff, and a new takeoff panel will show on the right side. Now click on Waypoint on the left side and choose a location on the map, then click on the map. This will set a waypoint to which you can add more if you like. As you can see, when you add a new waypoint, the map is updated and a new waypoint panel is presented. If you want to remove a waypoint, just simply click on the corresponding waypoint trash bin. Once you have defined all waypoints, you will need to set the landing point. Click on Return found on the left side in the Plan Tools. By default, this will be set to Return to Launch, but you can change it to Waypoint and Land. For now, we will leave it to RTL. Once you have finished planning your mission, then you will need to upload it to the vehicle. Make sure the vehicle is connected at this time. The Upload Required button should be flashing letting you know it's time to upload the mission. Click the button and you're ready to execute the mission. You will see done if the transfer was successful. It's best to use a physical connection to the vehicle, such as a USB cable to ensure a successful upload. After the mission has been uploaded, click on the plane located at the top left of the window and you will be back in FlyView. At the bottom of the window you will see Start Mission. Once the vehicle is clear and ready for the mission, you can slide to confirm and the vehicle will execute the mission. As you can see, the vehicle will take off and fly to a defined altitude, fly to the waypoint, then return to launch and land. You have just executed a successful mission. Let's remove this plan from the vehicle. Back in the plan view, you can also use geometry within a mission and set up a geofence. Let's do that now. Go back to plan view and click on File you will see options for Survey, Corridor Scan, and Structure Scan. Let's click on Survey. You'll notice that the new panel appears on the right side, but one of them is highlighted in red. This means it needs to be configured. Click it. Here you will be presented with the Polygon tool at the top. Let's click on Basic. If you click and hold the center circle, you can move the polygon around the map. If you click and hold on the circles on the edge of the green highlighted area, you can change the size.
Once you've adjusted the polygon, you can click Done with Polygon on the right side. Take note that the vehicle flight path will follow the white line on the map. We'll leave everything as default for now. Let's set up a geofence for safe measures. Click on the Fence tab on the right side of the window. Let's choose a Circular Fence and put the center spot in about the same position as our other polygon. We'll then expand the circle to cover a little wider area than the planned mission. Now if we go back to the Mission tab, you will see the mission plan and the geofence. Upload the new mission to the vehicle, and let's go back to FlyView. We can now start the mission. I've increased the speed of the video, but as you can see, the vehicle is now executing the planned mission as before.